let's talk about some raising systems. This video will cover some terminology and components, some rules and guidelines for pulley systems. We'll briefly discuss the T method and then we'll move into some simple and compound pulley systems. So terminology for the purpose of this video, the anchor will be the fixed point at the top of the system to which the raising system will be attached. The load is whatever we're trying to raise. A simple pulley system is a pulley system in which all pulleys move at the same rate of speed in relation to each other. And a compound pulley system it is a system in which the pulleys move at different rates of speed in relation to each other. Now for both of these systems, uh, any that I've ever seen only use one continuous rope throughout the system. There is a third system which is a complex system. And complex system doesn't really fit into either one of these two categories and typically uses more than one rope. But we're not going to cover that in this video. A dead end is a hard knot at the end of the rope. And a hard knot is a fixed knot which will not fail. Now that's not to say that the rope couldn't fail, but the knot will not come untied and it will not fail. Some examples of a hard knot would be a figure eight on a bite, overhand on a bite, or a bowline. Lastly, a friction hitch or a rope grab is an adjustable attachment of one rope to another, such as a Prusik, Autoblock, Kleinheist, or Bachmann. Some basic rules and guidelines. Number one, systems in which the rope is dead ended to the load will have an odd numbered mechanical advantage such as 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 7, 9, whatever. Number two, systems in which the rope is dead ended to the anchor will have a mechanical advantage with an even number, 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1, etc. Number three, the last pulley or change of direction, which is fixed to the anchor, will not provide a mechanical advantage. It serves only as a redirect, and we'll discover why that is utilizing the T method. Number four, pulleys are typically around 90% efficient, and carabiners are typically around 60% efficient. So you want to use pulleys whenever you can versus carabiners. All right, the T method. The T method is a method of calculating mechanical advantage, and you can think of T as tension. In this illustration, we have a teal rope feeding into and out of a silver pulley. Now, the way the T method works, uh, whatever value you have entering the pulley also exits the pulley. So if you pull down on the left side of that rope, you're pulling with a value of 1. And since you have 1 entering the pulley, you also have 1 exiting the pulley. Now you add 1 and 1 together and you get 2, so that pulley is seeing a load value of 2. Let's go ahead and get into the, our first simple rating system. In this picture, the blue figure 8 represents the anchor. The orange bucket full of sand is the load. Now let's say you lift that bucket of sand up just using your hand. You're going to have a mechanical advantage of 1 to 1. Of course, algebra will tell you that those 1's will cancel each other out. So you have zero mechanical advantage. So for every pound that you exert, you're raising that bucket 1 pound. And for every foot that you lift, you're lifting that bucket 1 foot. So there's no mechanical advantage at all. Now let's say we dead end a rope to the anchor. And that rope runs down to the load through a pulley. And then we pull on the free end of that rope. What do you expect to see? Well, let's use a T method to find out. We're pulling up with a value of 1, and if we have 1 going into the pulley, we also have 1 exiting the pulley. So the load is seeing a value of 2. So this is a simple 2 to 1 raising system. So for every 2 feet that you raise that rope, you're going to raise the bucket 1 foot, but the bucket's going to weigh half as much as it would under ordinary conditions. Now let's change things up. Instead of deadening the rope to the anchor, we're going to dead end the rope to the load. The rope then runs up to the anchor through a pulley and back down. Now we pull on the free end of that rope and let's use the T method to see what we've got. We have a value of 1 going into the pulley, 1 coming out of the pulley. So the anchor is seeing a value of 2, but that value of 2 stops right up at the anchor. The load is still seeing a value of 1. That 1 coming out of the pulley transfers straight down to the load. So this provides no mechanical advantage at all. You still have a one-to-one -one system. This explains why you have the rule of the last change of direction at the anchor provides no mechanical advantage. It only serves as a redirect. Now let's add a rope grab down at the load and install another pulley. In this picture, if you pull up on the free end of that rope, what do you expect to see? Let's use the T method. A value of one entering the pulley and a value of one exiting the pulley gives that rope grab a value of two. But don't worry about that for right now. That value of one that left pulley number one travels up the rope to pulley number two. You have a value of one entering the pulley and a value of one exiting the pulley. So again, the anchor is seeing a value of two, but we're not worried about that. 
that same value of 1 which exited pulley number 2 runs down to the load. Here you add 2 from the rope grab and 1 coming out of the pulley for a value of 3. So this is a 3 to 1 simple raising system. Now let's add a change of direction up at the anchor and see what happens. You have one entering the pulley and one exiting the pulley. Follow that down to the next pulley. One entering the pulley and one exiting the pulley. This places a value of 2 on that rope grab, but we're not adding that 2 in yet. Follow that 1 up to the next pulley. One entering, one exiting. Follow that 1 all the way down to the load. And again, 2 plus 1 equals 3. This is still a 3 to 1 system. And as we previously stated, the last change of direction on the anchor side is only a redirect. It doesn't provide the mechanical advantage. Now I will say, the one advantage to having a redirect on the anchor is now you can use your body weight to pull down versus using your biceps to try to pull the load up. So while it provides no mechanical advantage, having a redirect at the anchor can actually be pretty useful. Alright, now let's add another pulley into this system. So fixed at the load, we have a rope grab and the rope runs through a total of four pulleys. All right, let's do the T method. One in, one out on pulley number one for a value of two. Follow that up, one in, one out on pulley number two. Following down to pulley number three, one in, one out for another value of two. Go up to pulley number four, one in, one out. All right, one out goes all the way down to the load. And here you can see the math. Two plus two plus one is five. So this is a five to one simple raising system. Now let's add, let's make this a seven to one. This requires a redirect up at the anchor as well as another fixed pulley down at the load. And here you can you can see the math. You can do the math for yourself. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. So this is a simple 7 to 1 raising system. Now let's move into a compound raising system. We're going to go back to our 3 to 1 and we're going to add a redirect up on the top side. But instead of the redirect being fixed to the anchor, the redirect is going to be fixed on the rope just downhill of that <clears throat> the last pulley in the system. So what does that mean? This pulley is going to be traveling, which means the pulleys are going to be moving at different rates in relation to each other, which makes this a compound system. All right, let's use the T method. When you pull down on that rope, you're pulling down with a value of 1. 1 in, 1 out gives the first rope grab a value of 2. But you don't go up to that rope grab yet. You follow the rope in order. So 1 out goes down to the next pulley, one in, one out becomes a value of two on that rope grab, but we're following the rope. So follow that one up until it hits the first rope grab. Now two plus one is three, so you have a value of three entering the last pulley, and a value of three coming out. That three goes down the rope until it joins up with the very last rope grab. Two plus three is five, so this is a five to one compound system. Let's add one more redirect, and again, this pulley is not fixed to the load, it's going to be fixed to the rope, which makes it a traveling pulley. And obviously this is already a compound system. Using the T method, one in, one out, that's a value of two on the first rope grab. One in, one out for a value of two <clears throat> on the second rope grab. Now that one out joins up with the two from the first rope grab to become a value of three. Three in, three out makes a value of six on the very last rope grab. But following the three coming out of that pulley, it joins with the two to become five on the last pulley. Five in, five out. That five joins up with six to become an 11 to 1 compound raising system. Let's go ahead and add one more pulley, and this will be the last exercise for this video. Use the T method. One in, one out, two. One in, one out, two. All right, two plus one is three, so three in, three out, six. 3 plus 2 is 5, so 5 in, 5 out becomes 10. Now follow 5 up to that next rope grab. 6 plus 5 is 11, so 11 in, 11 out. Follow 11 down to where it meets up with 10. 10 plus 11 is 21, so using 5 pulleys, you now have a 21 to 1 rating system.